In the last hundred years, human civilization has been rapidly innovating in technology, inventing the internet, nuclear bombs, and cloning Dolly the sheep, the first mammal to be cloned from an adult somatic cell. Technology, therefore, has been an essential part for the significant increase in the standard of living in the last 50 years for all of us. This line of thinking made me wonder a bit about the institutions of an EE4. Institutions are a game mechanic that are meant to represent certain innovations in human civilization at certain points in history. A game like Hearts of Iron 4 doesn't particularly need this because the time period is much smaller. But when you take into account E4 lasts 377 years, you need a very different technology mechanic, as there are vast changes within human civilization by the end of the game. This brings us onto the video where we'll go through each institution and talk about how Paradox decided to implement it into the game. I also want to talk about how these institutions in E4 impacted the human race historically and therefore why they're all so significant. Although this is fairly different to my usual videos, I nonetheless think, after watching this for yourself, you'll be curious about civilization building, and it's probably one of the reasons why you play E4. The first institution within E4 we are going to talk about is feudalism. At the start date of E4, this institution is present in almost all the old world, except certain areas such as the Hordes. Feudalism developed after the fall of the Roman Empire, so it's been within medieval Europe for quite a long time. The main idea behind feudalism was to create a system in which along with land revenue, a standing army would be created for service. In other words, feudalism was a system where the relationship in society was derived from the holding of land. From this diagram, we can clearly see the top of the pyramid had the most land, while the majority of the peasants were obliged to live on their lord's land and give them homage, labour and a share of the produce in exchange for military protection. There are some good parts of feudalism since it helped protect communities from the violence and warfare that broke out after the fall of Rome and the collapse of a strong central government in Western Europe. Feudalism secured Western Europe society and kept out powerful invaders. This system also helped restore trade and the lords repaired transportation like bridges or roads. Although in our modern eyes it is a backward system, feudalism was a major step forward after thousands of years of slave-owning societies, which is why it's been added as an institution in EE4, giving you a bonus of plus one leadership without upkeep. The second institution that can spawn six years after the start date of EE4 is the Renaissance. It appears randomly in an Italian capital that has at least 20 developments, if this institution does spawn in your province as well, you gain minus 5% development cost. The reason the Renaissance was important is because it cultivated a new change in art, knowledge and culture. It changed the way citizens fought, with first the rediscovery of classical philosophy, literature and art, as well as new discoveries in travel, invention and style. This new way of thinking therefore helped the people of this era and many people had the desire to innovate society in a number of different aspects. The next institution we're going to discuss is colonization, which can appear from the start of the 16th century with an EE4. This is the first institution where pretty much any E4 nation can spawn it in their country, although it heavily favors the Western European coastal nations, such as Portugal and France, and you need to have the exploration idea quest for the new world, as well as have a province in the new world. For some European countries, colonization was game-changing for their nation, and countries such as Spain were able to gain substantial monetary benefits from new world resources. Gold and silver began to be shipped from the new world to the main Spanish economy. It is therefore clear that new world colonization was indeed a substantial success for Iberia. In terms of Europe, therefore, you can imagine the different priorities and changes in the balance of power due to this new exploited revenue source, which is why it's a significant institution for human civilization. It is fair to say though, colonization brought significant destruction to the new world, with many ruptured ecosystems and deaths in the native population. One of the most interesting institutions Paradox have added in 
is the printing press. This spawns within Germany after 1550, and the province must have one of the Reformation religions. Invented by Johannes Gutenberg in 1440, the printing press allowed us to share large amounts of information quickly and in significant numbers. In fact, the printing press is so significant that it has come to be known as one of the most important inventions of our time and it drastically changed the way society evolved. Historians explain the printing press also contributed to the rapid reformation within Europe, started by Martin Luther. Maybe you could even argue we may not have seen a reformation had it not been for this invention within the Renaissance. And that is why the printing press is important to have as an institution in EU4, and why historically it's significant. A less intriguing institution, but nonetheless a significant one, is global trade. As colonisation built up throughout the globe, trading became a more central part of countries' economies. This significantly impacted the quality of life throughout the globe, giving countries access to resources they couldn't have otherwise gotten. Previously, there were a limited set number of trading routes for countries, but around this time, at the start of the 17th century, the nations of the world became part of a greater world network. Any E4 nation is able to get this institution, giving you a plus one merchant bonus. The next three institutions I'm going to combine together, mainly because firstly, I feel most E4 players don't get past the 17th century, since many people get bored of their E4 campaign, moving on to a different one. And secondly, these three institutions are very intertwined with one another. The first institution out of the three is manufactories, which can be present in 1650. This relates to the specialisation of labour and the massive increase in productivity through labour specialisation within factories. The increase in output from this institution, of course, brought significant economic growth to the globe and enabled the increase in human population as time went on, as we come to the other institutions of enlightenment and industrialization. The enlightenment is the second last institution and starts historically in 1685 or 1700 in the game. This was an intellectual and philosophical movement that dominated Europe in the 17th and 18th centuries. The Enlightenment included a range of ideas centred on the value of human happiness, the pursuit of knowledge obtained by means of reason and the evidence of the senses, and ideals such as liberty, progress, toleration, constitutional government and separation of church and state. The ideas of enlightenment spread all throughout Europe, which brings us onto the last institution of EE4, which is industrialization. The industrial revolution transformed economies that have been based on agriculture and handicrafts into economies based on large-scale industry, mechanized manufacturing, and new ways for organizing work made existing industries to make them more productive and efficient. What started in Britain who became the first industrialised nation, changed the world forever, which is why it's an institution in E4. All three institutions also give you several bonuses, such as plus 10% goods produced, minus 25% culture conversion cost, and finally, plus 15% tax modifier, which is particularly good for your nation in E4. So all in all, while the institutions are not the most important mechanic and have more or less a limited impact on your gameplay, it nonetheless is really fascinating to delve into how these institutions came about and why they've been added into E4. What do you think is the most fascinating and best institution within E4 though? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now. Huge shout out to our patrons, most notably Charlie Demorel, Krilly, Flyerton, JDow52, Cargon, Xiaomi, Lewis Wright, Nicole's Christ, QA Shard, Redguard, and Shadowsing. Your support means a lot, guys. Once you're here, you might as well click on another video. I mean, it's, it's literally right there.